What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're working on some Schedule 10 stainless steel. Gonna do a prep, purge, and weld. So stay tuned for some good information on all of those parts of this process. Before we get into that, I've got a couple of cool announcements for you guys, starting with our Lincoln Square Wave 200 welder giveaway. Let me give you some details on that. As a thank you to you guys for getting me to a thousand subscribers before my goal, I am going to be giving away this Lincoln Square Wave TIG 200. To get entered into this giveaway, you guys can check out my How to Weld playlist and watch any of those videos, comment welder giveaway in the comment section, share that video and give it a like and also make sure that you are subscribed and you'll get entered into the giveaway. I will be giving you an extra entry for every one of my videos that you do this process on, as long as it is a how to weld video that is in my how to weld playlist. At the time of me reaching monetization on YouTube or the end of 2025, I will pick a random winner and give this welder away. It will be no cost to you. I'll pay for shipping as long as you're in the United States. And my second announcement, if you guys are not interested in a used welder and you're looking for something brand new, I have recently become an affiliate for Everlast Welders. Once I get rid of this welder, I'm going to be buying a Everlast Typhoon 330 for the shop. It's gonna be a water-cooled setup, huge upgrade. I'm gonna get a lot more settings than I have on this one. So if you guys are in the market for a welder, Everlast is one of the highest quality options and their prices are better than anyone I have ever seen, especially for their level of quality. Their customer service is also amazing. My buddy Eddie from Triple R Supercars or Autopilot Exotics, he works exclusively, almost exclusively on Lamborghinis, has an Everlast I believe it's a 210 EXT. He loves it and I am excited to make my next machine an Everlast. So if you guys are interested, looking for a machine, I'll leave that affiliate link down below. And if you purchase a welder, any TIG welder from my link that comes with a foot pedal, you'll get a free Nova torch and a pedal upgrade. Like I said, welding machine that comes with a foot pedal you will get a free pedal upgrade and a free Nova Torch. With that out of the way, let's get into the video and I can show you a little bit of this welder's performance that you could win. The first step in the Schedule 10 prep process is to put some nice bevels on your joints. There is going to be about a 3 16 to quarter inch bevel once your pieces are tacked up and that is a knife edge bevel. That can make it difficult to tack up, but the knife edge is highly necessary for getting good penetration. So we'll get that bevel on there and make it nice and even and consistent. These weld L's can be pretty difficult to get the bevel on. I do need to make a jig to attach to my belt sander so that I can hold them at a consistent angle. Doing it by hand like this can be easy to have a little bit of a wavy bevel, but with practice, you can get it. Although I do highly recommend a jig like I mentioned. Next up, we're gonna grab our deburr tool and clean up that inside edge so that we are nice and smooth. And now I'm using a Jag 10 tools cartridge roll to clean out the inside of our tubing. And then we will hit up the outside on a Scotch-Brite wheel this cleaning of the inside and the outside is to remove the tumbled finish, make it shiny, and also keep it as clean as possible. As far as our purge goes, it's pretty simple. We're gonna run the bottle on about 10 CFH. Of course, depending on our part size, you may wanna drop that down. For smaller parts, we're gonna be using these aluminum purge plugs. I don't have the TIG Aesthetic silicone purge plugs in this size. Those are a great option if you're uh, an adequate distance away from the welded area. Because this Schedule 10 pipe does not 
conform to the purge plug the way that 16 gauge will. We've got some of this Kapton tape, which I will link in the description. We're gonna use that to seal up these joints so that our purge is not sucking in air. So we'll give our plugs a good tap in here. And we'll grab our tape and just go around once to seal it up. Just like that. And we'll do that on our opposite end purge plug joint as well. So before we tack this thing up, I'm gonna go through the torch setup and machine setup. Right here, we have jumped up a size from my normal torch, which is a number nine air-cooled torch, to this number 17 air-cooled torch. Both of those will come with the Square Wave TIG 200 in the giveaway. Uh, so this torch is good for heavier welding. I believe this one's rated for 250. The air-cooled number nine is only rated for 150. I like the smaller torch for uh, getting in tight places and also just is a little more comfortable in my hand. But this one, when you're doing higher amperage like we are today, uh, it's a good thing to have because that smaller one will get hot really quick and you might destroy it. So we're running 150 amps on the machine, no pulse. Right now I'm running a number eight cup on the torch just for tacking about 25 CFH on the torch gas flow, and we will be tacking without filler, but when we go to weld, we are using 1 16th. This is 347 filler rod, because this is 321 stainless. This uh, will not make much of a difference compared to 304. You can follow all the same steps and directions, but remember, you're using 308 filler rod, not 347, like I do on the 321. And like I said, 116 filler. So let's go ahead and get this thing tacked. We're going to purge our tacks as best we can, also at 10 CFH. As I mentioned, the knife edge bevels can make it difficult to get your pieces lined up, but it's important to take your time and get it as perfect as you possibly can. Since schedule pipe is a nominal pipe, it is not perfectly dimensioned and there may be some inconsistencies, which also adds a difficulty factor into getting really nice fit up. But like I said, get it as good as you possibly can. Avoid gaps and side to side misalignment and you should be just fine. The knife edge can also make it difficult to tack without burning through. So start off with low amperage and ease into it until it tacks and try to pick a spot with tight fit up. All right guys, so now that we're tacked up, you saw we wiped down our tubing as we went. We've wiped down our filler rod. We're gonna tape this joint up, make sure that our purge is running correctly, uh, as I'm pretty sure it was because our tacks are nice and shiny. If you get some color around your tacks, that is usually a result of not enough purge behind the tack. So you may have to turn your CFH up or check for leaks or something of that nature. With that said, I'm gonna get you guys set up for some arc shots and we're gonna run these welds. I am not exactly sure of the reason, but this torch always screams like an eagle when the gas flows through it. Kind of interesting, doesn't seem to bother anything. We have switched to our number 16 BBW cup from Furic. Uh, we're running about 45 CFH and we're just going low and slow. Well, maybe not so low. Controlling the amperage on our pedal set at 150. It may not be a bad idea to drop down to 140, 130, uh, and maybe even 125 at the lowest I would go. But find your comfortable spot. We're using our 1 16th filler rod, and we're kind of cramming that stuff in there to fill this bevel up and help us keep our puddle cool that uh, wide puddle can get away from you at higher amperage. Uh, so you gotta keep that filler in there to keep it cool. And with the knife's edge bevel, the penetration comes somewhat easily. As long as you're really sticking your tungsten down in that bevel and walking that puddle forward before you add filler to get it to drop through essentially. I must admit I'm being a little bit impatient here today um, not giving quite enough time between welds for the part to cool down 
it would benefit me greatly as you'll see at the end these first ring of welds are a little bit below flush and just a tad bit warm and wobbly uh, this is why i would recommend dropping down amperage a little bit uh, allow your part to cool off and also be conscious of if your part is still warm you're gonna need less amperage to get the same result i was a tad bit afraid of not getting the penetration that i needed so i was being a little heavy on the pedal this stuff really doesn't require all that much since you're moving so, so slow and that bevel is so enormous and deep so you can run pretty light amperage and with the lesser amount of heat when you cram that filler rod in there it'll come up and be a nice round dab instead of something that's sliding around a little bit on you that heat control really is important for the consistency and the look at the end and if you're too hot you will have a hard time getting enough filler in there to make the weld come up above flush i must be completely honest with you guys this isn't something that i do quite so often so my technique has not been nailed down but just doing these two i can tell you what i'm doing wrong and as you do more of these you can hone in on that exact technique that gets you the best results the heat control is very important so a bit lower on amperage than i'm running here uh, just as slow and cram that filler in there when i say cram you want to get it in there quickly don't be in a rush uh, and mess it up nice even and uh, consistent as i wrap up this weld we'll move to the next ring and i'll see what i can do to give you a better representation of the heat control and once i get over to the second joint i encounter some other minor inconveniences like my bevel being a little bit large in these first couple welds making it difficult to fill it up and having a little bit of a shaky puddle as a result of having to move so slow but the bevel does straighten up again and I get pretty good control and I'm able to fill that bevel up and get a nice straight and above flush weld. The angle at which I was welding this with my part in the vise was also giving me a little bit of trouble uh, not wanting to hook up to the bevel on the top side because of gravity pulling the puddle down. As you can see now, I have repositioned my part in the vise so that is more of a flat position and not a horizontal position. This will really help when you're welding hot and using a lot of filler. Gravity will not have a negative effect on you and it actually might help pull that weld down into the bevel and get you that penetration that you're looking for. I should also mention that on this small tubing, I tend to struggle because there is a lot of quick torch wrist rotation required to keep a really nice torch angle. So I usually end up with a steep angle. That's something that I've definitely got to practice and get better at. And it does have a slight negative effect on my penetration on this second weld a little bit, but we do still get full penetration, just not quite as nice as my first weld and we will take a look at that penetration just as soon as we get these welds finished up. Here it is. Let's cut it in half, and then we'll take a look at both the outside and the inside. All right guys, so here's our first side. A little bit hot, little tiny bit under flush, but looks pretty good. The penetration is just, just about perfect. I know it's not a great view, but that's pretty good penetration, especially on such thick pipe. And this is our second side. You can see in the beginning where we had that weird fit up, our Weld got a little wonky. We did pretty well on the outside and got the welds above flush, but this time the penetration wasn't quite as good. And at our start there with our weird fit up, we got some oxygen in there and it made our purge a little dirty. That just goes to show you how finicky this stuff is. 
I'll have to mess around with it some more and nail it down. I hope this at least helped you guys a little bit, get you started, get you going in the right direction. If I were to give you any tips for when you go to do this, I would say keep the distance between your bevels at about 3 16ths of an inch. If you start to get bigger than that, you start to need too much filler and you have trouble getting enough in there, keeping it above flush. So stick to that 3 16ths of an inch from this side to this side and you should be all right. Make sure you've got that knife's edge, run it low and slow and you should get a pretty nice result. Before you guys go, I wanna remind you one more time, it's only a few steps away from getting entered in this welder giveaway. Just like, comment, welder giveaway, share this video and make sure you're subscribed and you'll automatically be entered. If you want to get more entries, go watch one of these videos and do the same process and you'll automatically get another entry for every video that you do the process on. If you're not interested in a used welder, don't forget my link in the description. Get yourself a free Nova torch and a pedal upgrade with any purchase of an Everlast TIG welder that comes with a pedal already. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.